The Puritan tiger beetle is a federally listed endangered species that inhabits only two geographic locations in the northeast region of the United States that include the Connecticut River Valley and the Chesapeake Bay region due to its highly specific habitat preference. They were classified as an endangered species in early 2007 by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Specifically, the Connecticut River Valley metapopulation will be our primary focus as it is subject to various complex threats. The Puritan tiger beetle undergoes a 24-month larval period before morphing into an adult. Mid-August is when the female Puritan beetle lays her eggs individually below the surface of sand. The sand in which the eggs are laid is often on a beach surrounding a large body of fresh or brackish water. A few weeks later, the eggs hatch and white, grub-like larvae with shovel-shaped black heads dig vertical burrows. During this stage, they are called first instars. During the summer months, the larvae remain mostly inactive, covering their burrows to prevent predation, as well as parasitism of their burrows by other beetles and flies. The larvae act as sit-and-wait predators, attaching themselves to their burrow using small hooks on the backside of their body segments, making it difficult for predators to pull them out. After two to four weeks, the larvae undergo a molt and become second instars, and will remain like this over winter. In the spring, they will molt again, becoming third instars, and remain in the stage for the next year. Pupation occurs in June of the second year, and adults emerge early to mid-July. Adults breed once in their lifetime in mid-August, then die. This causes the adult population to be extremely low during the late summer. The habitat preference of this beetle leaves little area that constitutes as suitable habitat. Along with the perfect sand texture and grain size, the larvae need the perfect amount of vegetation. The vegetation cannot be too plentiful or else the roots will encroach and disrupt their burrows and cannot be too sparse, enabling the sand to wash away with tides. This extremely long larval period makes the larvae susceptible to two years of spring floods as well as natural changes to the beaches, all of which can prove to be fatal. Given the beetles' highly specific reproductive needs, this makes them very susceptible to environmental stochasticity and tinkering of natural lentic systems. The various metapopulations of the species along the river rely on a natural flow regime that provides relatively invariable fluctuations in water level. However, dam production over the last century, although overseen by various fisheries biologists and conservationists, has more than doubled along the Connecticut River and its various headwaters. The following image represents dam construction in the Connecticut River Valley over the past century from 1850 to present day, where each red intersection represents a single dam. For the most part, each dam is independently operated by the town it occupies, and is used to suit the needs of said town. This leads to variable flow regimes that can include hidden fluctuations of water levels. Highly sensitive larval deposits along downstream river meanders, otherwise stable habitats, are therefore at greater risk while exposed to fluctuating soil moisture levels. Unnatural inundation, flooding, or erosion. A recent study by MIT and UMass Amherst has conducted that the flow regime over the, of the river is unnatural and erratic. This has caused the population to drop well below 1,000 individuals in the New England area, as well as restrict the populations to just three clusters along a single, sandy shoreline of the Connecticut River. The Northampton, Massachusetts stretch of the Connecticut River offers many recreational activities to surrounding areas. Such activities include boating, fishing, swimming, as well as shoreline recreation. The area of Rainbow Beach in Northampton tends to be a large draw for boaters and beachgoers during summer months when finely sanded area is exposed. The bend in the river in this area provides a perfect beach sand which attracts both wildlife as well as people. The beach extends for roughly a quarter mile and is exposed irregularly through the summer as water levels fluctuate from rain as well as dam operations. After visiting this area on any given sunny weekend or summer holiday, it becomes very apparent that this area can fill up rather quickly. With shorelines jam-packed with boats and with sometimes several hundred partiers and recreationalists, the area somewhat resembles what you might expect of a miniature spring break Miami Beach. In the United States, the Puritan tiger beetle metapopulations are regulated and maintained by both state and federal laws and regulations. 
First, the federal agency in charge of overseeing national protection is the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service is in charge of several conservation management strategies that include habitat restoration enhancement, translocation, and habitat conservation programs. Second, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Division of Fisheries and Wildlife is in charge of implementation and management plans put in place by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. These agencies are currently the only agencies that invest resources in the protection of the tiger beetle in Massachusetts, unlike more fortunate flagship species that gain the support of a plethora of civilian organizations. Moreover, the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection provides protection and mitigation forces for not only federal laws and regulations that pertain directly to the pure and tiger beetle, but also indirectly. Such indirect regulations include erosion control, pollution control, residential, industrial, and commercial zoning regulations. The main encompassing federal regulation pertaining to the Puritan tiger beetle is the Federal Endangered Species Act of 1973. State legislation formed in alignment under Endangered Species Act by Maryland included Maryland Non-Game and Endangered Species Act under which the Puritan tiger beetle is protected against illegal takings as well as destructive actions such as habitat modifications. Any intended habitat modification requires a permit followed by a plan that outlines how said project activities will avoid or mitigate possible impacts on the Puritan tiger beetle and its habitat. In Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act 321 MCR 10 puts forth the same set of rules. Moreover, Connecticut and the Connecticut Endangered Species Conservation Act provides the same protection. Policy alternatives should be aimed at driving people away from critical habitat zones that support known metapopulations of the Puritan tiger beetle, as well as possible corridors and connective linkages between metapopulations. This would allow for appropriate metapopulation rescue effects to occur, as well as provide and maintain resilience within the population. First, in order to discourage people from conducting recreational activities within the known Puritan tiger beetle habitat, a nominal fee could be implemented for enjoying such recreational activities in the area. One such place where this could be very effective would be within the Rainbow Beach area of Northampton, Massachusetts. By requiring a permit to enter the beach while also providing free access to other beaches, the state would effectively be altering a common pool resource to a toll good. This would provide both revenue that would supply aid for Puritan tiger beetle mitigation as well as discourage large quantities of people from congregating on the beach. Revenues provided through permit sales could also provide salaries for policy enforcement. By restricting the number of permits issued to this area, the state could control the overall impact of the beach, thus reducing the need for mitigation. Through this effort, Puritan tiger beetle protection could be accomplished effectively for a very low price. Second. And to go further to reduce human degradation of critical habitat, the fragile beetle nesting sites would greatly benefit from seasonal no-wake zones along sandy shore segments of its various inhabiting rivers. These incremental zones would reduce the erosive powers of waves during mating season and during the beetles' larval development. No-wake zones are common in many lakes around the nation and are aimed to combat the additive effects of boating waves from watercraft. Moreover, no wake implies that a boat is not allowed to travel at a speed where its wake or V-shaped trailing wave formation can be observed. Boat speed limits would roughly be under the limit of 5 miles per hour and enforced by river patrol on state and local levels. In summation, the Puritan tiger beetle will eventually be pushed to extinction without further intervention from federal and state level protection as well as public organizations. Without the help and education of the public in surrounding areas, the future of the Puritan tiger beetle could very well be bleak. Only with the cooperation of several levels of environmental protection agencies will this beetle be given the opportunity to recover. While preservation attempts may help certain metapopulations, the area around Rainbow Beach may not be able to recover as quickly. Current research and count recapture data analysis for the 2014 season has been postponed until further notice due to an overall unresponsiveness of this metapopulation over the course of the study. Conservation specialists determined that thorough research on this area was neither feasible 
nor helpful in light of such low number of beetles surviving in this heavily altered area. The future habitat of these beetles seems to be poor at best considering this retreat of research from the area. However, with the effort of citizens as well as education of beachgoers, there still remains a glimmer of hope for preserving this endangered species for future generations.